Welcome back to Daily Standup, and today we are going to be dragging over this research engines equation um, planning story into in progress. Um, I guess I could have moved that to do, but here we are. So, research engine equations. Uh, let's go ahead and put some detail in the story. So, what? Why and done when? So the what criteria for our research engine equations is we want to um, define all the equations we need. Uh, so ideally, so ideally to be JavaScript uh, functions that return uh, result. So ideally we're going to have a, a definitive list um, of equations that we're going to be needing for our engine calculations. Uh, and I should be having a video uh, out shortly using uh, ChatGPT to uh, generate a lot of those equations. So if you just kind of want to see a quick um, kind of preview, this is kind of what we're going for here. So you can see that we have... Uh, some ratios, fuel consumption, um, the effect of spark plugs, em emissions calculations, and um, some other things. But that's the general kind of gist of what this is going to be and why this is really, uh, honestly, this is core functionality of the app, core functionality of the engine component in our app. So a, b a big thing for this, what this engine application is going to be responsible for is we want to create uh, a component that allows us to enter input and it runs these uh, calculations and then it gives us uh, our desired output of whatever equation that we're trying to solve for whether it's, uh, it's you know emissions air fuel ratio pressure uh, temperature volume whatever it is we want to be able to put in parameters like this is my, this is the bore and stroke of my engine, and then you know here's what we want to calculate for. So that's kind of getting to more of the root of our uh, part of the use case of this application, but I think it'll be very useful. Um, at, at least it'll be useful for me because I don't know if I have the book by me, but I have this engines uh, com internal combustion engine book. And it gives you like lists of equations and things like that. But the problem with that is it's like I'm not, not really going to remember those and I don't really want to write them all down. And if I can just create a tool that shows me visually what I'm really looking at, I think that that would be really helpful, at least uh, at least for me. So done when um, we have our uh, JavaScript functions created. And I guess I should say JavaScript because we're going to be implementing this on the front end. Uh, this is a perfect use case for React. We put input in, and we receive a React, you know, a, a reactive output, right? We see we receive something on the UI. So we have our what, why, done when, and because I've kind of already more or less gone through the steps of this, um, I'm not going to point this too high. So I'm, this is going to be a one point task. And let's save that. So this is our criteria. We have our what, why, done, when, and we've estimated it at a single point. So again, that's about one day for me. And the scope of this project, one day, is about an hour roughly for me. So that's that's kind of the time frame I'm I'm kind of dealing with here. I'm I'm really equating it to uh, days, even though you're not supposed to technically do that, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So. <laughs> That's going to be in progress. So that's our research engine equations. Um, we have the last one. We we done the first round of project planning again, and we marked these three in the to do column: back end, back end, and front end. So we need to finish the home controller, uh, implement engine API, and then create API functions. I'm pretty sure I said that I was going to do the back end, finish home controller first, but I, I was kind of just in a better spot to do. Um, the research for the uh, engine equations. So that's kind of where we're at. 
And the next one, um, we probably should put some detail on now that we're thinking about it. Um, so this is research database providers. And let's go ahead and just kind of chart this out here. And done when. So what for this is going to be, we have to find out, find out which database we want to use. And I'm going to list certain um, uh, qualifications we're looking for. Uh, I like it to be cloud-based, ideally. Um, I like it to have like a some sort of some sort of UI to interact with and build and build tables. Um, and I, I think I just want it to be relational. Uh, I don't think I want to go the the NoSQL uh, database for for right now. Uh, it, it might make sense to do a NoSQL database if I'm planning to have a lot more like subscription events in terms of if somebody adds a, an, a new engine to the feed, do I want people's feed to update in real time? Uh, you know, it's a little bit easier to do kind of with more of a subscription-based model in that you get a little more for free with a NoSQL database. Um, like I know Firebase kind of has through their uh, SDK, they kind of have like, uh, subscriptions that you can you can subscribe to let's say you know record added and then it would when that when that when an event is received from that uh, subscription then it, you can program I guess passing like a callback I guess is what you could look at it as or how you could look at it as so I think I'm just gonna stick with relational now uh, if I choose to go to NoSQL uh, you know I don't know it might make it might be a little easier just doing relational. Uh, so qualifications, cloud-based, UI to interact with, and a relational database. The what is it has to be free. <laughs> it's got to have a, well, I should say it has to have a free tier. Um, I'm not going to pay for, uh, really, I don't want to pay for anything, especially just this is because, or especially just because this is a personal project, but there's a lot of free stuff. So I'm going to, free tier, has got it's got to have that. And another one is it's got it's got to have a, it has to be secure. And I, I guess what I mean by that is there are some there are some specific things that I need to keep in mind uh, revolving around encryption at rest and um, uh, what what is it travel? I forget what the correct term is. Um, but basically, is the data encrypted only when it's uh, sitting in the database, or is it encrypted? Is it going to be uh, encrypted as it's coming back from the database? Um, ideally, that our, the way we set up our web technologies, we should have encryption because we're using HTTPS to communicate to the database. But I just like that to know that maybe that in, I, I would like to have encryption be just uh, explicitly stated that it it supports encryption for data at rest. Um, so I guess I'll I guess I'll take out the I'll just have data encryption at rest. Um, another thing that I want to consider, and I haven't I haven't drilled down to the detail on this yet, but I, I don't know what we're going to use for for our identity provider, and I don't know what we're going to use for whichever authentication protocol. If we're going to use OAuth, or if we're going to use uh, something uh, similar, I'm not sure yet. Or basic auth, I don't know. Uh, I, I think I want to go the token route. I, I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can get that from specific database providers. Like uh, some some cloud based ones might offer their own like uh, I, basically identity provider out of the box that you could post to and then get a, a, a token back. That way, I just don't. I'm not going to store user credentials in in a table. That's not really. I'm not, I'm not doing that, all right? So I'm just going to offload that to an, uh, hopefully an identity provider. Uh, I, this is where some of the research comes in, so I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to put that here because uh, identity, if you ever hear ID, IDP, that's just identity provider. I don't know. We always make everything acronyms, but that's one, that's one this consideration that I'm going to have when looking at databases. 
And I'm trying to think what else. So we have tier encryption arrest. Uh, and I think that, that might be it for now. We might think of more stuff later on. The Y is pretty straightforward. We need, we need a database to hold our apps uh, data. Again, sometimes these Ys are just redundant, right? But it's just, just follow the process. <laughs> Done when we have selected a we have selected a database. Um, so that's going to be the done when criteria, and we'll know exactly when we're done when we've picked it. I don't, I'm not going to go into any implementation here yet. I'm just going to say we've established what database we're using, and we go from there. And this one's not going to take that long, so I think uh, I'm going to also probably assign this a one point. Uh, I don't think it's going to take more than a day, so we're going to put one points. So we've saved that. So now we have research. Uh, I'm going to add actually another research here while we're thinking about it is I want to add uh, research uh, cache, cache implementations, implementations. I think I already know what, what I think we're probably just going to use Redis. Uh, Redis is pretty, pretty standard, but we'll make a research for it anyway. This one's going to be a little more, uh, I think, prescriptive. So uh, figure out what cache uh, provider we want to use. I don't know if provider is the right word technically, but uh, and then we want to uh, figure um, implementation. strategy for cache and what I mean by that is generally um, caching uh, deals with time to live values right like how long do you want your your uh, keys to stay in the cache because a uh, cache is basically just a key pair uh, little local store right so how long do you want those keys to persist do you want to expire after a week you know 30 seconds a month whatever it is so TTL is time to live uh, we need to figure out that. We also need to figure out um, what it, what exactly do we want? What exactly uh, do we think we should cache? And immediately what comes to mind is is engine posts, right? For the feed, I'll just put um, feed, and I'm, I'm going to leave it at that because this is what you know the research is for. Why we need to use cache to increase app performance. Caching will save us um, calls to the database if we have values stored in our uh, cache. I think I want to use, well, here's the thing. I, another thing that I want to maybe consider with databases, actually going back to that, is I want to look into possibility uh, look into possibility of using uh, distributed cache with our selected database. So the, picking the database is going to be a blocker to this story, but uh, this one is going to be, okay, now that we've, uh, eh, well, see, here's the thing, like, I want to possibly use distributed cache, basically offload our cache to some kind of provider, like cloud provider. If, if whatever our cloud database provides us, does that offer us a way to use distributed cache with the with our client? I don't know yet. So that's going to be, I'm just going to say look at a possibility. Like AWS offers a, a, a Redis cluster that you can use for your cache and you can specify, you know, different nodes. How are you going to how are you defining how your data, sh you know, what, like the shards, basically, how is your data uh, divided up amongst the nodes? And that's that's a whole strategy in of itself. Like there's a lot of research been done into, you know, when you, when you get a value, uh, you should put random characters at the end 
because that way um, the data will be even more evenly spread across nodes. If you have specific data always being posted up to your cache and it's very similar, uh, it's probably going to go to the same node. So that one is going to experience the most traffic, and then nodes two, three, four are not going to have any much traffic, if any at all, which which just kind of creates a bottleneck on node one. But if you if you add some kind of basically some kind of salt or like random characters at the end, you could develop a strategy where you post them to more evenly across your your nodes. Basically, how sharding is the is the concept. Different things handle it differently, uh, and it, it's it's kind of like an open problem that people are researching. So that that's just one thing that we need to keep in mind with with cash, right? We don't want to just create this this one way bottleneck. We want to just make sure that we've we've we thought about that strategy. Um, so uh, nodes, uh, data sh shards, everything like that. Uh, Okay, so done when we have we have selected a uh, cache provider, and I'm just gonna put Redis because I, I think that I think I think we're just gonna use Redis. Redis is like super popular. It's free. It's just a key value store, and it's it just works. But we're gonna have research ticket anyway because we have to. Uh, we gotta do the work. Um, and I'm going to point this also at a one point because I don't think the distributed caching may take a little longer to fully research. So that could warrant putting a two on this. Um, but I, th well, I tell you, I'm going to go with a two because I don't know how long it's going to take me to figure out what, depending on our database selection, if we're going to get. Uh, a possibility to use distributed caching with that database or if we're just going to have to uh, we're going to have to figure out another strategy ideally I like it to be through that that um, thing but I don't know it might also have to be up to how we're hosting this like whatever cloud provider we're going to be we're going to be going with um, but that might be getting too into the weeds of, of implementation details so We'll see. If if we don't use distributed cache, I mean, we're, we're fine to use in-memory cache. In-memory cache, basically just you, you're saying that, you know, the, 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 the total memory you have for your application, you're just going to use that to store temporary data. The only thing with that is you probably should kick down your time to live value probably for, you know, to clear it after, you know, your end. We're, we're in .NET, so after you end a session. So if you tie the your cache to your session um, duration that that's a really simple strategy so uh, let's actually put that um, uh, pos in memory look into in memory uh, cache with uh, and then I'll just say tie use uh, we want to use our .NET uh, session, so we're going to have to set up session actually in, in our .NET, but that's really easy to do. And a session is just assigns for when a user comes to your site, they're going to, um, when when ideally after they've been authenticated, we're going to give we're going to give them a session ID and all, the, and it's going to house. Uh, you can put data in the session, but it's just a basically a way for like state management in an authenticated fashion tied to that specific user. So that's kind of all it is. Um, so those are research tickets. I think we're good here. So I think I'm going to call it on this stand up. Uh, and I will see you on the next one.